Good evening, Good evening everyone. This is James from Entertainment News. I'm here with my colleague and cohort in action, Mr. Rick Rittemuski. And we have with us today Ms. Jamie Gray, Olympian, two-time Olympian. You know, we want to keep that in perspective, right? So this is not her first time at the rodeo here. Definitely her second time at the Olympics. Jamie, thank you for joining us tonight. Yes, thanks for having me. So, so, so tell us tell a little, us a little bit, bit about, about you, you, right? We, we, we know, know, Rick and I Rick know what we want to talk about, for the audience that's going to be watching us, kind of give us a little, us a little overview, overview in terms of, terms of who, you who you are, are and obviously, obviously why we're going to be watching, watching, watching you in the next couple, couple weeks or, couple weeks or so, a couple months. Oh, right on. Uh, wow, well, that's a hard question to start with. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I'm a rifle shooter, of course, but uh, I do so much other stuff on the side. I you know, do a lot of working out, uh, cycling, running, some ping pong, uh, tennis, and uh, I recently got married about, oh boy, eight months ago, I guess, uh, and so I've been spending, thanks, spending some time with my husband as much as possible. If we've, I've been traveling a lot, so I haven't seen him very much, uh, but when we're together, we, we do enjoy doing all those things together, uh, and he's a shooter as well, so we also work together, but... It's a lot of fun. We really enjoy it. It's great to be able to be around each other all day, every day. Awesome. <laughs> Marriage. Yes. 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 You know, yes. I, 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 I'm <laughs> loving you, you and, and, and I know Rick is uh, pretty, pretty close, close by me as well. well so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's good, good stuff. stuff though. It is. Yeah. I don't know if my wife's listening, listening but uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> But I wanted to ask one question along those lines. Talk about, talk about your husband, and I know, like you said, uh, you mentioned he's a he's a shooter as well. He's a marksman, so mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna start with the you know the hard question: Who's the better shot? <laughs> that is the hard question. Well, good thing we shoot two different events, but uh, if we'd have to compete against each other, I would hope to say I could win. <laughs> but we do play some games against each other, and he gets me sometimes. So it just depends on the day. But. I mean, I, mean, I, I also noticed that, that there was another, another husband and husband wife, and wife team, team, right, that's, right, that's shooting yeah. shooting Olympics. Olympics. I mean, that's, that's interesting, right? right? We, uh, we, uh, we interviewed um, uh, the Lopez, the Lopez family, family you know, from, from the, the uh, Taekwondo. Uh, Taekwondo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so all, all of them, them are in the Olympics, Olympics as well. As well. So, so it definitely, definitely a family affair going on out there. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, unfortunately, my husband didn't make the team this year. Hopefully, maybe in four years he will. So... Uh, but we do have two big couples uh, here living with us, the Updegraphs. One shoots pistol and one shoots rifle. Uh, and they're a married couple. And then the Emmonses uh, are also a big married couple in the sport. Uh, Katie Emmons is from the Czech Republic, and Matt Emmons is from the United States. So they spend their time between both places, but uh, everyone in the shooting world knows them as the, the married Emmons couple. So. Well, let's get into shooting in the Olympics a little bit. Um, yes. We noticed you're wearing a Beijing shirt, oh, and yeah. we'd like to talk about your uh, Beijing experience. Um, you would take, you took fourth in air rifle and uh, fifth in the three position rifle. Mm -hmm. um, did that experience leave you hungry for more? I mean, you just missed out on the podium. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because it's bittersweet. Uh, the first event in the Olympic Games is the Women's Air Rifle event, actually. It's the first medal awarded yeah. out of any medals in the Olympic Games, uh, one of our prized possessions, actually. <laughs> and uh, being fourth was a little bittersweet. Of course, I could have brought the first medal home for uh, the U.S., um, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. However, I wasn't disappointed with my performance. Uh, air Rifle tends to not really be my event. I tend to be a better small bore shooter. Uh, but as my coach would say, I was the dark horse in Beijing for Air Rifle. And uh, I started my match off really rough, uh, dropping three points in the first 11 shots. And I kind of just turned it around and cleaned the next 29, which I had to do to even have a chance to make the final. Uh, but to walk into my first Olympic Games, my first event ever at the Olympic Games, I, I can't be mad about that performance, honestly. To uh, one of, Probably one of my best performances on the international stage, and it was at the Olympic Games, so you can't really be disappointed with that. Uh, and the same thing in small bore, actually. Uh, a couple of days later when I shot the small bore event, it was my personal best uh, in international competition, and it, you know, sometimes your best isn't good enough. And I just got beat that day, 
So, I mean, you can't, can't walk out of the Olympic Games shooting a personal best and being upset about it. Would I like a medal? Heck yeah. Right. <laughs> so I'm going back. Is the schedule the same this year in London? Will you guys be up first on the first day or anything? Yep, uh, we are, the women's air rifle event is always the first Olympic medal, um, so at least for as long as I've known it, uh, and yep, so we'll be, they rush us right through that event, we start bright and early at 8 o'clock in the morning, and try to, you know, they rush us into that, the final, and try to get it to be the first medal every time, so uh, one of shootings prized, <laughs> prized yeah, events. Well. <laughs> So what would you guys be first? Are you going to be able to take advantage and participate in the, the opening ceremonies? Last, uh, while at Beijing, we got to walk into uh, the opening ceremony, but we left right away. So I actually didn't get to stay and see, see uh -huh. the actual opening ceremony. So it was in and out for me. Right. Well, tell, tell us a little bit about your competition since you qualified for not just one, but two. Events right, so you got the you got the air gun, and then you got what the, the, the twenty point caliber, caliber rifle. rifle. And, and, yeah. and I know you mentioned a little bit in, in, in the pre-show. Pre I got a picture, picture of you, of you and, this and this ridiculously, ridiculously scoped, scoped out, out, <laughs> out gun. gun. Tell us a little, Tell us bit, a little about, bit about first of all, first of all your, two your two events, and then, and then kind of what are those components that you guys have to your your weapons there? Yeah. Yeah, we like to say firearms, so. <laughs> but uh, the, they're pretty different events, actually. Air rifle is shot indoors, all indoors at 10 meters, uh, with an air rifle, which is pretty much a pellet gun, uh, a high-speed pellet gun. Uh, and then small bore is shot outdoors at 50 meters, and it's a three-position event. So we shoot prone, standing, and kneeling. Women shoot 20 shots each position. In small bore, sorry, small bore is, is 22. Uh, it's just our little slang for it. And um, so air rifle is shot all from the standing position. And women shoot 40 shots. And we get an hour and 15 minutes for those 40 shots. And then small bore is shot in three positions. And you're given two hours and 15 minutes to shoot 20 shots in each position. Uh, the big thing with small bore is that you have wind out there as well since you're outside and that has a huge effect on your small little 22 bullet. Uh, so you do, there is some wind skills in there. Of course going to London it's a huge skill uh, because I mean we all know London's windy and rainy all the time. So <laughs> I mean that's gonna, that's one of our biggest skills we're trying to hone in on here within the next Oh, wow, 45 days, I guess. Um, <laughs> Who's counting, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's a month and a half to you and me. Yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, the rifles are different as well. So the air rifle, we are, it's a standard rifle, we call it. And it doesn't have as much adjustments as the 22. Um, so the butt plate doesn't adjust as much. There's a lot. Uh, a lot more restrictions on it. The rules are a lot stricter on how much the gun can weigh, uh, you know, how high the sights can be off the gun. Uh, and we do shoot all open sights. Nothing is magnified in any, in either sport, uh, air rifle or 22. Uh, so, and then the 22 just, you, it's called a free rifle. So, or a sport rifle for women, but it, it's the same thing. Um, and you can have pretty much do almost anything you can think of to do to that gun. And, and that's why the small bore does look a lot crazier. Um, they do make similar air guns to small boards, but you can just do so much more with the small bore. You can really, really make it fit you. So, so the big thing in right. shooting is you want to you wanna take your body and put the gun to your body. So you want you want to be in a position that's really natural to you. Um, not necessarily always comfortable, but it's something you can relax in and, and really be comfortable, you know, shooting in and and then you fit the gun to yourself cool. whereas air gun you kind of have to adapt a little more to what the gun allows you to do right on. It, it, speaking of that, that could, could you, you show us in the camera us. like a, a stance that you would do to hold um, one of the guns yeah so uh, here we go the um standing stance is about your feet um shoulder width apart and then we're putting the the hip out. Here, let me move the camera down just a little. Um, you push your hip out, and then 
you rest your elbow on your hip. And as you can see, it's all uh, bone structure. So this arm is, we like to be straight up and down, and it just goes straight into the hip, into the leg. And we're really trying to relax everything we can possibly relax. Uh, of course, you have to use a little bit of muscle to stay standing, but um, you're really trying to relax as much as possible, and that's what gives you a, a good stance, and that's what allows you to shoot under pressure. You know, the more muscle you have, the, you know, you just, you get a little nervous and, you know, your muscles start shaking pretty easily. And then, you know, we're trying to hit a target. Uh, the target at 50 meters is about a dime size. Um, the black is, is bigger. The black is about this big. But the wow. center, we're not just trying to hit the black. We're trying to hit the center of the black. And the center is about a dime size at 50 meters. And air rifle, actually, I have an air rifle target right here <laughs> I was riding on. So oh, cool. um, air rifle is, you're trying to hit, it, this is shot a shot target, but in the center of this target, there's a little pencil dot, and that's the 10 you're trying to hit at 10 meters. A pencil dot. So, Notice, yeah, so did you see where the, the, the bullet went through the, with the target, James? So, so no pressure, pressure, right? I mean, the thing <laughs> is, this size, 50 meters away, you yeah. got the, the winds of London blowing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. yeah, and the scores, I mean, in air rifle, a competitive score to make a final right now is about a, you'll have a shoot it off for a 397. So that means you're missing that little pencil dot on that target three times out of 40. Wow. Um, and, and in small bore, small bore really depends on the conditions. Uh, air gun is a lot more consistent because it's all indoors and you don't have conditions to worry about. Uh, but small bore, if it's real windy outside, you know, the scores will be a little lower. Um, but people are constantly shooting in the 580s, um, and on a good day, it's it's the mid to high 580s um, to even just make a final, and, and the top person might be 590. So that's missing that little dime, you know, 10 to 15 times in 60 shots. So it, it's it's pretty tough. Is it all or nothing? You either hit the dime and you score, or you miss and you get zero, or is it, you know, like no. a distance from the center type of thing? It's a, uh, it's a scoring ring, so the, the center scoring ring is a 10, and then it goes out from there. It goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, okay. 2, 1, 0. And, uh, yeah, if you shoot a 0, you're done. <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. So, you know, we're, we're definitely shooting almost all 9s and 10s. Uh, in air rifle, definitely all 9s and 10s. In small bore, every so often you'll throw one way out there to an 8 or so, but, but you can still make that up in small bore. In air gun, if you shoot an 8, you're pretty much done. Um, and that's just, that's the reality of it. Okay, so let's talk about air rifle. You, you showed us the standing stance, and you mentioned, I think, um, is that one hour and 15 minutes? Yeah. For, um, for um, holding 40 shots. So in that time frame, are you in that stance for an hour and 15 minutes, or do you shoot, relax, and then, re, you know, kind of refresh, get it back up, or are you, what's your approach to doing that? Yeah, you have an offhand stand, so there's a little stand next to you. So you'll pick up the gun and shoot, uh, you know, your one shot, and then you put your gun back down on the offhand stand, load, and then pick it back up and, and do it all over again. So you're, you're picking the gun up at least 40 times in that time frame. Of course, there's ciders before that, so you get unlimited ciders, and everyone takes a different amount of ciders. I take about 10 because um, I'm a really slow shooter, so I need as much time as possible to shoot my match. So I have to shorten my cider time, but you can take unlimited ciders before you start the match, and once you start the match, you have your 40 shots, and, and yeah, you're putting the gun up, and you're taking the gun up and down each time. And, and a, um, a, a cider, a is cider that a practice, that a practice shot? shot? Yeah, I was going yeah, to ask the same, same thing. thing yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the, the <laughs> ciders are just, are, you have a practice shot, uh, and, and everyone varies how many they take. It, uh, it's normally between 20 and 15, 10 and 15. So, uh, and then you hit your match button, so it's all scored electronically. So I showed you a paper target, um, but the sh targets we shoot at are all electronic scoring. So you're, mm -hmm. you're just shooting through a, a black dot uh, down range, and it comes back on a computer screen and shows you the score that you had. Okay. So let's talk for, the, for a moment. I know you're a coach at Columbus State, yeah. um, according to your biography. <laughs> if you had a, a freshman come onto your team, never picked up a gun before, at the end of four years working with you, do you think you could get the student to be shooting consistently the center of the target? Uh, yeah, it depends on their work ethic, honestly. Um, and, 
you know, it really does. Uh, if they would work as hard as I'd want them to work, yeah, of course I think I could get them to become a pretty decent shooter. I'm not saying I can take anyone in this in the country and, and make them a world class shooter because just not everyone is frankly good enough to be world class. Um, but as long I think as long as you're willing to put the hard work in and uh, and willing to be coached, yeah, of course I think you could become a you know at least a nationally ranked shooter. And that actually leads into my second question. We know you're a good shooter. You've spent um, your life shooting. You went to um, Alaska to go to college to train yes. with some of the best collegiate athletes. You've won um, world championships in 2011 and 2010. How do you go from being a good shooter to somebody who's that consistent on an Olympic level? Oh, I mean, me personally, I think, it, I mean, like I said, I think it's just hard work. Um, I'm a very hard worker. I'm at the range every day. I do stuff on the range and off the range, you know, I do PT, like I said earlier, um, I do mental training off the range as well, I work with a sports psychologist, a nutritionist, um, PTs, and, you know, I'm really always trying to find something to give me an edge, uh, and, and that's just what it takes, um, you know, if you put the work in, you can, you can definitely get the results out. That's a, that's a good, good lesson, lesson in life there too, I guess, right? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> So, 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 so talk to us about, about uh, the family, family and everyone back, back in Lebanon, Lebanon right? right? As uh, uh, for everyone to cheer for, for you and uh, throw in fundraisers, fundraisers and barbecues and all that good stuff. <laughs> How's, that, How's going? that going? How's the, the, the support from the home going? Yeah, honestly, uh, Lebanon, Pennsylvania is probably the best support I have. Um, Oh, oh, us, us, hello, hello. Okay, sorry, hello. sorry. We're, we're going to blow those up when we get done. I mean, it's going on NBC, it's going all over the place. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you know, I've always... Yeah, see, I threw you off guard a little bit there, didn't I? <laughs> uh, um, you know, the support from Lebanon is, has always been there ever since I've been a little kid. I shot BB gun growing up in Myerstown, Pennsylvania, which is a town right next door. Um, and I think we were in the paper as little kids shooting BB guns, um, and it was a competitive BB gun club. So we went to nationals and everything for, for BB guns. Um, and then even through uh, my junior program I with the Palmyra Sportsman's Club, we were always in the paper, anything we won, national championships, um, NRA national championships, just anything was, you know, they're just real supportive of it. Um, they they've continued on with me even though I've I've moved away uh, and, and they report on everything. If USA Shooting puts something out in in the news, my daily newspaper puts something out as well. Um, the Lebanon Daily News as well as the Patriot News, which is the Harrisburg News, uh, and it's it's amazing. I'll, I'll call home and um, my cousin lives right next door to to my parents, and I'll talk to her. And, and just the other day, actually, she was telling me a story. She went to her nutritionist and. I gave her, she has to lose some weight, so I gave her some some tips, and she took in my tips, and, and the lady's like, wow, this is really strict, this is like someone who'd be training for the Olympics, and my cousin's <laughs> like, that's really funny, because that's who, I got it from someone who's going to the Olympics, and she's like, no, who was that, and she, she said my name, of course, and that lady's like, wow, I'm such a fan, and oh, cool. so, that's I mean, cool. that was, it was just really cool, you know, to be like, wow, people do really yeah. pay attention in the news, so, at least to the good stuff. I'm, I'm happy to see that people pay attention to the good stuff in the news. Yeah, yeah. that's good, too. And speaking of family, we talked early in the discussion about your husband, Hank Gray, who um, is a member of the Army Marksman team. Can you talk about your training facilities in Fort Benning? I mean, it must be impressive working with some of the best shooters in the country. Yeah, I think I'm the luckiest civilian here. <laughs> I, I have a pretty good deal since, of course, since I'm married to an uh, AMU guy. Um, I'm allowed to train at the, at the Army Marksmanship Unit and use their ranges. Uh, of course, I help out with some details, but, uh, you know, it, it's not available to everyone. Um, so I'm just, I really think I'm one of the luckiest people to be able to work with those guys. And and some of the best shooters in the, in the country, honestly, and in the world, you know, we have uh, I think three or four of us are going to the Olympic Games. Um, Sergeant McPhail, Sergeant Updegraff, and Sergeant Parker are are we're all going together. And I mean, it's just great to be down here and be able to train with all those guys every day. Uh, I improved greatly. I think when I came here, I used to live at the Olympic Training Center, 
for four years and then um, finally my husband and I decided we needed to be in the same place instead of having a, a long distance relationship and, and it worked out that I could come down here and, and train and I mean honestly it's just the luckiest uh, situation I could have possibly been in and, and my scores have, have sh improved from it just being around those guys and just being able to train every day with those guys. Yeah, it looks like you're definitely in a good place with everything, um, personal and, and on the athletic front. And yeah. in addition to shooting, I mean, a lot of times on those, you know, those programs you see on television, these guys learn to tear down and clean a gun real quick and then put it back together and all that. Is that part of the sport as well? Um, as in, is that part of in competition, like if something went wrong, you'd have to tune it up, you know, within your time slot, or is that really not part of what you do? Uh, not, not really. It depends what goes wrong with your gun. Um, ours don't malfunction very often as, uh, as far as rifles go, but some of the pistols, they, they have more of that. Uh, we have a rapid-fire event, so you get, uh, I think, two malfunctions, and, and then you have to clear your malfunction. So if you can clear it real fast, maybe you'll have a chance and be able to shoot the rest of your targets. But we don't, we don't have any of that in rifle. Uh, of course, our guns have broken. I've had my gun broken before, but uh, depending on what it is, you'll get extra time for it. Uh, if the gun is completely unshootable, you, you do get extra time, but it, it's not very much. Uh, but all our gun manufacturers are at the, at the venues normally, so we're just like, here, this is broke do something about it, <laughs> and hopefully they can fix it in time. Or I, I always have a backup gun. One of my teammates, I'll, I'll always be like, okay, your gun's my backup gun this match. You know, um, Matt Evans and I, he, both of us are like, okay, if something happens to my gun, I'm using yours. So we already have that, that established. So when we go to London, if something does happen, you know, we each have each other's guns to, to shoot. Hopefully it would work out. All right, just a couple... That. Yeah, it looks like you've got every uh, contingency covered. Um, yes, hopefully. <laughs> you never know. It is the Olympic Games. Anything can yeah, happen. you got to be ready. <laughs> and I guess married to an army man, they're, those guys are always ready too, so it, yes. it, it must run in the family. <laughs> okay, a couple more questions before we wrap up. Um, going into your match, you know, you mentioned it's the first day of competition, early in the morning, um, after a good night's sleep. You know, what... You're gonna before you start taking any practice shots. What are you gonna do um, to get in the zone? Well, every uh, before every match, the night before, I write a match plan. Uh, of course, I have a match plan in my head of how I want to compete. But I I sit down and, and really think about write write down a match plan the night before, and and the next morning I'll read it on the way to the range uh, when I get to the range, and and then I also do some holding before I even get on the line. So I set all my stuff up and, and go to a wall and just hold against the wall. Um, so holding against the wall means just aiming at the wall. Uh, and just to get the position and feel the position and make sure my body's ready to get into the position, uh, you know, I stretch out and then hold against the wall and then um, maybe read my match plan again, make sure I know what, what I'm ready to do. Uh, and then then it's time to perform. Uh, you know, the first the first bullet I load in that gun, it's time to perform whether it's a side or shot or not. Um, I treat every every shot as as it were a match shot. So uh, I I just get up there and and hopefully it's it's all good. <laughs> if not, then you you know you need to go through some you need to pull some tricks out of your hat because that's the day you have to perform and uh, and that's you know why we train every day is to pile those tools in our toolbox and hopefully we can pull the right tool out when needed. Uh, I mean, I don't think anyone can expect to just walk into the Olympic Games in any sport and, and think it's going to be perfect. Everything's yeah. just going to be perfect. Uh, this probably not going to happen. If it does, awesome. Uh, but, you know, you always have to be ready for everything. So um, hopefully I can get up there and, and just really, you know, get my mind into it. Um, I tend to be a better competitor than I am a practicer. So I have, I have that going for me. So. Okay. This, that's quite a regimen of, um, of getting ready and having a plan. And a lot of the athletes that we talk to, it sounds like they do, you know, have a very similar mental and, and physical approach of kind of uh, maybe James easing into the event. It's not like you show up on the scene and, and jump right out there. Um, so it's really interesting to see across disciplines how a lot of you guys have similar habits 
Um, but one question we've asked all of our athletes so far, we're going to ask you right now is, you know, what would it mean to you if you're on the top step of the podium and the American flag is being raised to the ceiling and you hear the national anthem? I mean, your husband, your husband is, 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 is part, part of Team USA, USA as in the Army, and you were so close in Beijing. I mean, what would that be like for you, Jamie? Oh, I'm pretty sure it'd be an emotional day. Um, you know, it's it's amazing to stand up on on the podium and you know the best thing to do is to hear your national anthem being played. Um, I don't think there's anything better than that. Uh, you know, you see your flag being raised, your national anthem being played. You know, we're it's Team USA. You know, I mean, it's it's bringing that not bringing that medal just home for me, but it I mean, it's bringing medals home for the USA. And and I don't think you can get anything better than that, honestly. Um, I mean, I just, I guess I don't know what it's like to win an Olympic gold medal yet, but um, I, I'm sure it would be just an awesome, I mean, it, it'd be all, I mean, everything, all your dreams would come true, honestly, I mean, that's what, that's what I work for every day, so um, I couldn't imagine it not being an emotional day. That's, that's what it's all about, about huh? Yes. Jamie, Jamie, thank, thank you, you very much for, for, for taking, taking some time to talk with us. With us. Um, we, we really enjoyed this tonight. Uh, I specifically, because again, I just really want to know about that gun that you had in there. there. I'm <laughs> thankful for explaining all of that. that. And, and, the, and the ciders, what was it? Was that it there? Yes, about? yes, good yeah. word. Yep. We got all, all the little three-letter <laughs> acronyms now for, for, for <laughs> you know, like a stuff. But, but again, again, from myself, myself and the whole team, team and the team and the team, we definitely want to thank you for taking, taking the time. We uh, will be watching you. Uh, we will be cheering for you. Like, so we'll both have, up, we'll all have on our Team USA gear and just be jumping up and down at the TV as much as possible. As possible. <laughs> and and we, we, hope we hope to see you, see you on one of those podiums. Balling, balling your eyes out when, when it starts to yes. matter. <laughs> so, Dan, thank yes, you very thank much. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks, you too. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. All right.